Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Wednesday, the uh, 17th of December. A lot to talk about this morning. Kind of would like to take kind of a high-level overview here at the start and uh, talk about where we've been, where we stand right now, and where we are going. We have been in a very cold weather pattern across much of the northern U.S. In fact, some spots in the Mid-Atlantic region have had 20 days in a row with below normal temperatures. For an example, Washington, D.C., at Reagan National Airport, DCA, they've had 20 straight days with below normal temperatures. That is a relentless cold weather pattern that began around Thanksgiving Day for much of the northern U.S. It is about to come to an end, if not today, then tomorrow in the Mid-Atlantic region with milder conditions coming, uh, at least for the next couple of days. In fact, those milder conditions will last into the morning hours on Friday in the Mid-Atlantic region, just ahead of the passage of a strong cold front. That strong cold front whips on through, uh, slides off the east coast by midday on Friday. Temperatures will drop Friday afternoon, and the winds will pick up noticeably throughout the northeastern states, gusting at least into the 40 to 50 mile per hour range. And by the way, that front will uh, result in a soaking rain event for much of the northeastern part of the nation from later tomorrow, tomorrow night, into the morning hours on Friday. Now, where we are going, well, we currently have La Nina conditions here. We haven't looked at sea surface temperature anomalies in a while. This blue area represents colder than normal water out across the equatorial part of the Pacific Ocean. This is the west coast of South America right here, and we've had a persistent La Nina condition here. Now, notice an area of warmer than normal waters here just to the east of Australia. This will actually start to kind of spread to the northeast and east over the next few weeks. We talked about in the winter outlook that I expect to see La Nina conditions weaken over the next few weeks. Maybe by the time we get into the second half of the winter season, we'll see neutral signal out here, nearly normal water temperatures and it's starting to show up now in the western Pacific Ocean where we, we're, we're getting a warming condition setting up here to the east of Australia. Again, that will kind of eat away at the western edge of the La Nina over the next uh, few weeks here. And again, I think the second half of the winter season may feature neutral conditions. Now, why is that important? Well, with the La Nina, as is in place right now, the polar jet is dominant. And that has certainly been the case. We've had this polar jet stream uh, pulling cold air down across the northern plains, the uh, Great Lakes, into the northeastern part of the nation. And that, that's as opposed to a subtropical jet, which tends to dominate in an El Nino type of winter season. So as this La Nina starts to weaken over the next few weeks, look for more of an activation of that southern jet stream, more storm systems cutting across the south and perhaps ultimately coming across, coming up the eastern seaboard. We haven't had anything like that uh, so far this early winter season. Another area of interest here, by the way, look at this cold uh, blob of water here just off the northeastern U.S. coastline. We'll kind of uh, take a closer look at that in a moment here. I also wanted to point out much of the northern Pacific is warmer than normal and much of the uh, uh, Atlantic is warmer than normal, but you still have La Nina as we approach the astronomical start of the winter season, December 21st, and this area is uh, quite interesting indeed. In fact, let's take a close-up of that right now. And here it is a closer look at the waters right off the east coast. Really, really goes all the way down the east coast here. This is quite interesting. We'll, we'll certainly monitor this over the, the next several weeks. Could it have an impact on coastal storms? Sure, there certainly can be uh, an impact in one way or another on coastal storms uh, down the uh, down the stretch here as we uh, get into the heart of the winter season. A lot of warmer than normal conditions out across the uh, Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf region as well. But right along the coastline, a very interesting colder than normal sea surface temperature pattern here as we get into the second half of December. Well, in terms of what may uh, occur over the next couple of weeks and beyond, 
Uh, one of the things I'll be looking at closely is uh, high latitude blocking. There's been a really a stubborn ridge of high pressure on the other side of the pole over, over uh, really the Scandinavian region of uh, Europe, northern Europe, and we'll take a look at that and how that changes over the next couple of weeks. And one indication that we may start to see more high latitude blocking on this side of the pole over Canada, Greenland, for example, is the fact that the North Atlantic Oscillation does tend to drop over the next couple of weeks. All the red here are the forecasts from uh, the ensemble run of the GFS, and there's uh, certainly a tendency for it to drop from its current positive values into neutral or even negative values by the time we get to the end of the month. Now, let's take a look at its closely related cousin right here, the Arctic Oscillation. Same kind of a pattern coming up here with a, a, a drop into neutral territory, maybe beyond this point, it'll drop into negative territory. When these two teleconnection indices drop into negative territory, that tends to be correlated with high latitude blocking over Canada, over Greenland, which in turn uh, kind of increases the chance, increases the likelihood for cold air masses to make their way into the central and eastern U.S from Canada, so these are uh, some indices we'll certainly continue to monitor over the next couple of weeks. Well, let's now, in fact, take a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly pattern. This is using last night's ensemble run, <coughs> excuse me, of the European model here. This is the area I, I want to focus in on. This is Greenland right here, Canada here, and of course the U.S. down here. Notice here uh, a deep trough just on the southeastern side of Greenland to the south of Iceland, another deep trough here over the north central part of Canada. Now, watch what happens here as we progress through the next uh, uh, several days here over, again, this part of North America here. Here we are uh, into about 24 hours out and then a couple of days out and notice you start to see some orange showing up here over Greenland and orange on this kind of a plot represents higher heights than normal and this is the area that we'll be watching here again I noted up front that there's been a ridge over the Scandinavian region of northern Europe over the past several days with above normal heights above normal temperatures and it tends to retrograde here as we go through the next week to 10 days or so uh, towards Greenland into this part of the North America side of the North Pole. Again, the NAO and the AO kind of dropping over the next week to 10 days or so kind of supports this idea of uh, uh, in increasing pressures or heights over the Greenland, over Iceland. And this is the area where I, I specifically look for some high latitude blocking this time of the year, which again, in turn, tends to favor cold air masses being uh, forced underneath into the central or eastern U.S. This is all the way now towards the latter part of December. We're out to December 29th here, and that Scandinavian ridge tends to retrograde into this port part of North America, Greenland, Iceland right here, northeastern Canada, with maybe that trough starting to edge back towards the coast as well here by this time. So this is something we'll monitor over the next week to 10 days or so. But again, some signs for high latitude blocking to form over Greenland, over northeastern Canada as we get towards the latter part of December. Now, in terms of the uh, temperature pattern, this again is using the 0Z run of the European model, the ensemble version of the European model. We've got to go out in five-day increments here. And a big-time warm-up coming to this part of the nation for sure but a little less certain for that part of the nation, the Mid-Atlantic, the Northeast U.S. You see, we've, again, we've had this polar jet in this fashion here, pull, pulling some colder air masses into the northeastern part of the nation. But let's go forward. Again, these are rolling five-day averages of the two-meter temperature anomaly using the ensemble run. This is the current five-day time period. Then we'll go out to days two to six, uh, three to seven uh, I into five to nine right here. And again, notice big time warm up in this part of the nation, a consistent, a sustained 
warm up here, but look at this part of the nation right here. This would be kind of a battle zone. We have very mild conditions coming in uh, later tomorrow into the day on Friday in this part of the nation, but then the strong cold front pushes through. Temperatures will drop on Friday afternoon. A moderately cold air mass moves in on Friday, Friday night, and Saturday. Then another one looks like it arrives in this part of the nation early next week. Uh, and then another one, probably later next week. This will be a battle zone area here. I do not expect to see sustained warm-up in the northeastern part of the nation. Let's go a little bit farther in time. And here it does at this time kind of expand to the north and east. And by the way, this is just going to be some uh, record-breaking warmth across the, uh, the heartland here later in the month here. Later next week, we're talking. And then we go out a little farther in time. And again, notice, still, a battle zone right in this area right here, some below normal, some above normal. But do not expect sustained warm-up here. This is all the way out now to the end of the month. And again, if you're in this part of the nation, the Central Plains, the Southern Plains, uh, look out. You're going to have some very mild conditions for this time of the year as we go through the latter stage of December. Let's walk through the surface forecast maps from the Zero Z GFS model run. Uh, dry conditions today throughout the Northeast, still very wet weather pattern out across the Pacific Northwest, Southwestern part of Canada, the British Columbia. Tremendous snowfall amounts in some of those higher elevation regions of uh, Oregon, Washington, British Columbia, just some uh, incredible amounts expected over the next 5, 10, 15 days or so in that part of the country. Now, let's move forward here, and we have uh, quite an interesting soaking rain event. We haven't had a real soaking rain event in the eastern states in a while, especially the northeastern U.S., because it's been so cold. Well, here we are on Thursday night around midnight time frame, and we have a strong cold frontal system at this time cutting through the uh, Midwest, very cold behind it, some accumulating snow in the northwestern Great Lakes region, and very mild ahead of it with south to southwesterly flow of air pumping in very mild air. And this will turn out to be a soaking rain event for really uh, the entire eastern third of the nation. Here we get into the overnight hours on uh, Thursday going into early Friday morning. Absolutely can be some heavy rainfall along the I-95 corridor region at this particular time now. Keep in mind there's many areas with snow cover, especially across southeastern PA, central New Jersey, uh, where seven or eight inches of snow fell over the week and not much has melted. This uh, will certainly play a role in potential for some ponding of water, or maybe some uh, flooding in uh, some localities here by early Friday morning with the heavy rain combined with some snow melt here by, uh, again, late Thursday night, early Friday morning, go out a little bit farther in time. Then that cold front sweeps off the East Coast by the time we get to midday on Friday. Temperatures will have uh, reached their peaks in the day, for the day, early in the morning in places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, maybe even uh, by midday, they'll still be very mild, but then temperatures will drop in the afternoon post-frontal system, and the winds will really pick up out of the northwest, easily gusting into the 40 to 50 mile per hour range across the mid-Atlantic, maybe 50 to 60 mile per hour range in the uh, 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 portions of New England late Thursday night, Friday morning time frame. And here we go. By the time we get <coughs> excuse me, into the evening hours on Friday, notice this tight pressure gradient between this incoming high, departing low. That's very strong, 980 millibars. And here is your pressure gradient. Again, very windy Friday afternoon throughout the northeastern states. Temperatures dropping. There will be no doubt some snow shower activity in those interior higher elevation locations, maybe some snow squalls as well. We'll go out a little bit farther in time and things settle down uh, overnight, Friday night into Saturday morning. Here we go on Saturday morning. We have high pressure in control. The winds will be far less than on Saturday than there will be on Friday in this part of the nation. Now, I just want to quickly go out quickly uh, towards the latter part of, uh, well, next week and into December. We have, a, again, another 
chilly air mass, not extreme cold, but another chilly air mass, pushes into the northeastern states, the Great Lakes, by the early part of next week. Again, do not, I do not expect a sustained warm-up in the northeastern states. If you're out here over the central plains, that's a different story. You will have a sustained warm-up out in the central plains. Here we go out later next week into Tuesday, and then uh, Wednesday time frame, of course, Wednesday being Christmas Eve. Again, we have kind of a cold Arctic, uh, cold Canadian high here over southeastern Canada. That will pre prevent any kind of a sustained warm-up in the northeastern states. And here we are uh, uh, at a week from right now into the middle part of next week. But this is another area of interest right here. Notice this low pressure area at this particular time uh, kind of uh, getting ready to approach the southern part of California. And in fact, let's go a little bit farther in time here. And first of all, we have a system back east on Christmas Day, at least according to last night's uh, GFS model run. We'll have to watch this. There certainly has been a consistent sign for some kind of a wave here that will be moving into cold air. Now, whether uh, this comes to fruition or not, we'll just have to wait and see, but there will be some cold air out across the southeastern part of Canada. But again, look at the location of this storm right here. We're starting to see, maybe, starting to see that pattern change with an activation of that southern branch of the jet stream here as La Nina slowly weakens here. This is, again, a week from right now <coughs> on Christmas Day. Let's go a little bit farther in time. Yet another cool air mass looks like it cuts into the northeastern states uh, towards the end of next week. And here's a kind of an interesting storm system coming a little farther south than what has been taking place over the past several days here. And this system eventually cuts cuts on out into uh, Texas here by the time we get to the end of the month and uh, produces potentially produces some snowfall way down uh, south here. So this is something we'll monitor here over the next couple of weeks and beyond. The fact that the southern branch of the jet stream may become a little bit more active and we may start to finally see some southern storms that could ultimately end up uh, near the east coast. This is at the end of December right now and yet another chilly air mass here in the northeastern states. So the bottom line here, I do not expect a sustained warm-up in the northeastern part of the nation. There will certainly will be uh, uh, individual one or two, maybe even three day periods over the next uh, 10 to 15 days or so with above normal conditions, but uh, uh, in between there will be some cold air outbreaks into the northeastern part of the nation. Now, if you're in the middle part of the nation, absolute sustained warm-up coming for uh, much of the next couple of weeks. And we'll continue to look at a couple of things here as we go towards the end of December into early January. Will that southern branch of the jet stream become more and more active? And at the same time, will high latitude blocking become more of a uh, feature up across Canada and Greenland. So that's it for now for ArcfieldWeather.com. This has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.